Good morning, everybody. Victor here. We just ran out of Jupiter Inlet. I got my boy Adam Lucy for moving weight fishing, and today we're chasing Florida's one of Florida's most expensive fish, the Florida pompano. So we're going to be running up and down the beach looking for these silver nuggets. Adam's been on them for the last few days, right? Yes, sir. Getting on a nice, hot, steady bite. And the unique thing about today's video is Adam not only does YouTube charter fish, but he also commercial fishes. So we're not going to be able to just keep our recreational limit, but he's actually able to sell these fish. So we're going to take some home for a catch clean cook, but Adam's going to kind of walk us through the whole commercial process of this fishery and show us how this delectable fish actually ends up in restaurants or markets or your local Publix. And yeah, so we're going to just jump right into it. We're right here on the beach. We've got a beautiful day ahead of us. Slick, calm. Let's get to it. Let's do it. So check this out. We got a bucket full. We'd like to have more, but this is all Adam's got. He went out last night and these are called sand fleas. Pompano are a, they're kind of like an inshore pelagic species. They will roam up and down the coast from the Carolinas all the way down to Florida, wrap around the Gulf Coast. And they're usually inshore, I'd say like within 30 feet of water all the way to the beach. And these sand fleas right here, you guys see them crawling around in my hands. These actually live on the beach or just outside of it in the sand. So if you've ever been to the beach and you see all those little protrusions in the tide line coming in and out, it's actually the sand fleas that are doing that. And this is one of their favorite foods right here. They're also called mole crabs. And I'm pretty sure they are a crab species. You can see those little guys. They look real cool. They kind of look like little bugs or something. We got this fancy looking little chicken rig. All right. 2-0 Mustad Demon Circle Hook. Dropper loop. And then we have these little floats. What these floats do is two things. It almost acts like a little indicator. So I think Pompano can see the bait from far away. You got a little chartreuse chartreuse there but it also helps keep your bait suspended so that way your sand flea is not on the bottom and it's not getting picked to shreds by crabs because crabs actually love these things so your bait is up there in the water column and if you can imagine now your sand fleas are top to bottom so the pompano can see it from far away instead of your sand fleas just laying flat like that so we got one two three you don't need to hook them fancy just right here in one end and out the other and the live ones work a lot better than the dead ones do and just like that so Pompano is gonna come by slurp it up I got another dropper loop at the bottom of my rig and that's pretty much the premise of this day we might jig for them as well but we're just set up here in like 15 feet of water right off the beach and we're gonna just put out as many rods as possible and wait for the Pompano to come to us if we don't get any bite in 15 minutes We'll move a quarter mile down, a quarter mile down. Adam's got buddies on the phone that we can talk to and we'll just go to where we think the pompano might be. They might come right to us, we'll see. And Adam actually likes to cast them pretty far close to the, well, pretty close to the beach. So we're casting towards the beach. We're fishing. We got one, two, three, four, five, five or six rods. And we got a ton of rods rigged because Adam says that the sharks have been really bad. So there's been a ton of fish on the beach. I call them junk fish, whatever you want to call them. Bonefish, ladyfish, jacks. Yesterday we caught 60 bonefish and that's a that's a year long at Keys Charter, so. <laughs> There's your ladyfish. I'll put them in put them in the fish box. And then we do it again, but hopefully catch a pompano. I got something real little on. Blue runner. Commercial boat, so everything's got a value, so we're keeping this guy. As well as the ladyfish, the jacks, That's the mackerel. Go wow. Double shark and two sharks. Are you kidding me? You got two sharks. Cold water slang. That is just absolutely not what you're looking for, Danny. I don't know what kind of shark it is. Raggedy one. Come on, don't float to the surface. Be a pomp, daddy. Not fighting hard enough to be a pomp enough for me, but sometimes they'll juke you out and swim at the boat, but. Oceanic. Blue runner. Not what we're looking for, but there's a ton of life on the beach right now, so it's gonna be bycatch all day long. 
My direction's going on. I don't know what we got here, boys. Not fighting very pompano esque. Very fighting very catfish esque, if I have to say so myself. What's a typical pompano fight like? They run sideways on the beach. I'm not a ladyfish. I never jump. And tangling up the rig. They they run sideways on the beach and do sporadic things. And I don't know. We'll just have to show you when we hook one. But it's it's very obvious when you do have a pompano. And that's a ladybird. It's a dollar bill. A lot of junk fish right now, but that's okay. Adam said he didn't have his first pompano until 9 a.m. yesterday. So I think we're not gonna get our first one until 10 because I think a lot of this is tide dependent. You're running. I had a ladybird. No, did I? Yeah, it was junk. What, oh, oh, am I tangled? No, yeah. Okay, so one of the species you could catch off the beach, blue runners, ladyfish. Adam said he caught 60 bonefish yesterday. You heard that right. Um, sharks mackerel, jack crevels, everything pretty much eats a sand flea. You know, I'll tell you, a lot of people say they don't like catching ladyfish, but neither do I. Small? Ah, uh, yeah, small. We'll Fishing see. on the reef here, there's like little muttons, and little pork fish, and all that type of jazz. We called it pork fish. Little pork fish? We're fishing close to the reef, so you're gonna get these little reef species like mines, mangroves, and little pork fish. Please be a pump. I will say, these guys are very strong for their size. There we go. Second bonefish of the day. Adam said he got 60 yesterday. Pretty cool to see them on the beach. I haven't caught a lot of bonefish in my life. They're really highly sought after by fly fishermen and just inshore guys. They're kind of like the pinnacle of the flats. And here we are on the beach catching them on a chicken rig with 30 pound fluoro and this obnoxious float. Pops down. Wait, let's look at them before we cast. I want to confirm what they are. Yeah, don't scoop them. They're not jacks. They look They're like blue, big blue fish. fish. They're blue fish. They look like carpet. Wow, they're not responding at all, are they? Look at that. Oh. oh. Right in front of them, just like Captain Blair Wiggins. Rod sit down, nice steady cramp. Bro, they just like mouthed it. They're not eating, that's a bad sign. Dude, do you see that? So we just ran across a school of bluefish right here in the surf, and they don't even want to eat, which is very strange because bluefish are usually crazy aggressive. So something's going on. Adam's been talking to his buddy on the phone who's an old time commercial fisherman. He says that he thinks that the cold front that we just had, that came through probably shut down the pompano. Vic letting go another bonefish here. Terribly slow fishing today. Pedal. But it's pumping up fishing. Coming at you? Got him? Very slack. What is this? It's a blue runner. Oh. And a bone fish. Two for one. For one, Nothing gets my blood pumping than a blue runner and a bonefish. So this bonefish right here, in Hawaii and other parts of the world, they use bonefish for marlin bait. In the U.S., you can't even look at that thing and think about taking it home or you're going to get a fine. Cold bite. No. Oh, he's there. He's jumping. He's coming at you. Popping up. Jumping. Is it? I don't know. He feels kind of dense. He's going sideways. Please, we deserve it. We've put in our time. It feels the biggest of anything today. It's a pop, right? Yep. Thought you'd be more excited, Adam. Yes. In the boat. Uh -oh. All right, Pompano on. Spirits are alive. It was getting kind of slow there for a second. This is what we're after. That's about your average size. 
Oh, dude, he was hooked good. Yeah. So there is Pompano, number one of the day. You're allowed 250 as a commercial fisherman. Recreationally, you're only allowed six per person per day, I'm pretty sure. So we got a long ways to go. Out of how much you get a pound usually? I get 10 to $11 a pound, and uh, which is high, but but I, you know, I got private restaurants that I sell to, and I'm a wholesale dealer license, so I'm allowed to do that. And it's, I just like going to restaurants because it's a lot better price. Market price is six, seven bucks a pound, and restaurants is higher end, you know. It's one place, the same place that is uh, buying it, is also selling it as their food. So there's no middleman, and that's why we can charge a little bit more. It's quality, quality fish, pompanos, one of the most sought after fish for restaurants. But that's how it could go. I was asking him, I was like, have you had days where you come out in the morning and it's completely dead? He goes, Vic, I've come out before, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., nothing, and then from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., it's just one after another after another. So that's what we're hoping for. But anytime you catch the target species, it makes you that much more motivated to check rods, get baits back out. So that's what we're going to keep doing. Tangled in another line. Tangled in this one right here. You guys have no idea how many bonefish there are on the beach. No idea. Until you've come out here and done a little bit of, little bit of pumping up fishing. There he goes. We're tight. Please be a pop. This rod doubled over. Yeah, it's a bonefish. Man, so many bonefish out here, huh? What is that, like bonefish number 10 of the day? I thought it was a pop every single time I picked up the rod because I'm just being hopeful. It does feel dense, it feels heavy. Are we moving pops or what? I don't know, you're kind of sussed me out here. Bonefish 40. Oh, it's a pop! Oh, look at that. Tangle on the rig here. Well, Hold on. Hold it, it up. Hold it. Don't go free spool. Oh, Vic, you just killed me. I like to grab them right here in between the gills. They're super strong and they'll try and wiggle out of your hands. See, he likes to do that wiggle like that. That is, that's your pompano. That's what we're after today. And they're not biting. You got a nice splatter on the lens. From so as we move into 2024, we're gonna have a killer year. I wanna take a second and tell you guys about the sunglass sponsor on the channel, Waterland Co. If you guys have been watching for a while, been with them for about a year now and absolutely love these things. And honestly say they're the best sunglasses I've ever worn. I wear the Milken blue glass. Oh my gosh, look, I just got bit. Well, As I'm talking about them, the Waterland's got tight. This is, oh. I think, a Pompano. Um, but yeah. I uh, have been wearing them for about a year now. They got a ton of different models to choose from. They make lady sunglasses as well. And you guys can actually save 15% off using my code Landshark. You guys know that this is my livelihood. You know, I'm out here all the time fishing and investing in a good pair of sunglasses is really important. Cause it's just gonna make your time on the water more enjoyable. Whether you're sight fishing or whatever it is, or just going out for a nice recreational boat ride. You wanna be comfortable, wear a good, frame on your head something you can see in and oh yeah we got a pompano so you guys can find that linked below at waterlandco.com i'm also going to have it in the description box below but use my code landshark save yourself a month some money and get hooked up for 2024. they are a pretty little fish so these little silver nuggets roam up and down the coast right on the beach looking for sand fleas, crabs, shrimp, whatever else they can find. And you guys will see later when we cook one up why people go crazy about this fish. They got an insane oil content, really unique texture. Nothing like any of the jack species or like a permit or anything else that they resemble or even an African pompano. They truly are a class of their own when it comes to uh, flavor and texture. Real hard, powerful little fighters. And as you guys can see, very elusive we've been we've put in the time we've been out here since 6 a.m and this is our fourth pompano all day that feels like him can you put that in the rod holder for me Jack? got another one on right now not a big fish but or sorry don't know if it's pompano it definitely feels like one but gotta burn them in fast because the sharks are bad I 
How many fleas do you need? Oh, I need three. You want all blanched or live? Yeah, all blanched. Adam, your cast to the beach worked. We on, baby. I think it's the right flavor. Adam's been lobbing these all the way to the beach. Um, it's funny, when you're on the beach, you want to be like the guys on the boat and get out far. And then when you're on the boat, you try to get as close to the beach as possible. Hi. Yeah, he's moving. He's scoping to the left a lot. And now he's scoping to the right. Hasn't jumped. It's going to be an afternoon bite. We're going to salvage the day. Oh, Adam, front rod. Front rod just got hit, I think. Yeah, we got a pump right here. No. Okay. No? Are you sure? Yep. I told you to come on the inside, Adam. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yep. You just know when you're connected to that pump. No, you just know. You feel it in your bones. They just got these like really aggressive little head shakes. That body turns broadside. You could just feel that they're so much stronger than the bonefish and the ladyfish. That's a two pounder, right? That's Vic's dinner. That that fish. That fish will feed Brooke, Dennis, and I. They are a sick little fish. They are. They're just like these little freaking mussels. That's a really nice sized fish. You can see how wide he is too. So that's almost a twenty dollar fish, huh? Um, I'd say he's two and a half, maybe three pounds. So yeah, pretty close to it, dude. But Don't you like it when they behave like that? Yeah, he's he's. So... <laughs> dude. All right, that is a calico crab, and. Uh, Really good cobia bait, really good permit bait at a smaller size. See them right there. Pretty looking crab. They're actually good eating. A lot of a lot of people like to eat them off the pier and stuff like that. But these are why some people like to fish floats um, with this. Or sorry, floats also to keep them off the bottom, but fish bites to uh, keep some bait on your hooks because these things love to pick off your samples when you're fishing. It's a good size one. That's like a, a nice eating blue crab right there. Yeah, that's a good eating crab right there. Vic, you want to take him home and make <laughs> yeah. some crab, if pin, I had crab a, pin soup? Yeah, if I had a bunch, I would. Well, I've always wanted to, but I've never... I've never uh, gotten enough of them of this big size. Normally when you catch them on the beach, they're like a quarter of the size, but this is a good size one. This is like the smallest blue crab that we would keep with Brooks family. It's pretty cool looking little guy. These guys bury themselves on the beach. You see that pattern right there? Real pretty. Kind of matches the sand. He's being super lethargic. He's not even trying to get away. So this is very routine in Florida. This is our Fish and Wildlife Commission, FWC. They're just doing a routine check, making sure Adam's got all his stuff legally, which is good because that ensures that we have a good population for the future. And uh, yeah, just making sure everything that Adam is doing is by the book. And they're gonna check us real quick and we'll be on their way. How you doing? What's up? How y'all doing? Good. You gonna make me famous? Yeah, Just <laughs> talking right? about That's it. Stuff. In a positive way. Good luck. All right, take it easy, guys. No, I should have. FWC came, checked us. We're all squeaky clean because that's what Adam's about. Um, but I wanted to give some love to my brother because. Adam does three things, right? He does YouTube, which you guys got to check out his channel below. Sick fisherman in South Florida. We've had a lot of great trips together. Yes, we have. He charter fishes. You guys always ask me if Brooke and I charter. We don't. And I always think of people who I could recommend. If you guys ever come to South Florida, today was a pompano day, but he goes offshore. Sailfish, kingfish, dolphin, wahoo, tuna. We got some of the best fishing coming up in the spring in Florida, so you guys can check him out. He's got lots of videos to prove it. I'll have all of his charter information linked below. Some good mutton snapper fishing in the spring and summer as well. Really good. I forgot about that. We've had some killer mutton days. And yeah, so this was just a little taste of the commercial fishing. Some days he kills it. Yesterday he caught 30 pompano. Today was kind of a bust. Today's one of those days where you probably just cover your expenses, huh? Yeah, for sure. You know, that's part of being a pompano fisherman, let alone commercial fisherman. You're going to have a lot of bad days and you can't get too down about it because 
they could bite tomorrow. So you, when the weather's right, you just got to go every day. You got to be out there in the ocean. And when they come by, you catch them. And when they're not biting, you don't. And that's yeah. that. When Vic comes to town in Jupiter, they're not around. Yeah. Every it time like we... Pompano or fishing, that's how it goes. Vic, I'll catch them for like two days in a row. And we get the plan set. All right, Dennis is available. Victor's available. Let's go Pompano fishing. And they're hard to get to bite three days in a row nowadays. So yeah. we, we got to get lucky one of these days and go on the first day. So we're gonna call it and we'll see you guys back at the dock, fillet up some pompano and cook them up. So check it out guys. This is one of the smaller pompano we caught today. I want Adam to take the big ones to the market cause he can make a lot of money out of them. Um, cool thing about this fish, this is like one of the only fish I do this with. But what you can do is if you feel around to where his head um, gets kind of soft, I can take my knife Watch this. He's kind of slippery right now and I... You can take your knife and you can actually trace right around and just like that and take his head off. So it's gonna make it a lot easier to flay. And I rest my knife right here on the top part of him. And I'm just gonna work my way down. Just rest of the knife on the spine, just making nice clean cuts until I get to the fish's backbone. Immediately I can always tell when I'm flaying a pompano because the oil content on these guys is unlike any other fish. But that's why they're so highly sought after because most fish is lean, especially in Florida. Um, but that's why this fish is so dang good because it's kind of like a ribeye, you know? You get a ribeye for the fat content and the flavor. These fishes have so much flavor compared to a lot of other warm water fish. All right, so look, there's one side here, pompano. And you see how we cut that head off? It just makes it so much easier to fillet. Nice oily, oily meat. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Just gonna trace them right here on the outside. And this is a Dexter Outdoors. 8 inch max flex knife. You guys can actually find it linked below. And you can actually save 20% off. Use my code LANDSHARK. I'll have that link below or at DexterOutdoors.com. Any longtime subscriber knows I've been using Dexters for the last five years. Even before I started my career on YouTube, I've been using Dexters. They're great all around knives. Made in USA. Still, after all these years, made in the USA and uh, they have pretty much a knife to choose, a knife for every application, for pretty much every single fisherman out there. Okay, we got the other side of our pompano. Not bad, not bad. That's going to be the first fish fillet you guys see from Vic in 2024. So you guys will see it more in the kitchen and when it's finally cooked. But this fish, I'm telling you, is so amazing. And there's a reason it's got such a high price tag on it because it is delicious. So I'll see you guys back in Pompano. Once again, big thank you to Adam for taking us out. He's back there cleaning the boat. But you guys can find all the stuff linked below. And we'll see you guys in the kitchen. Okay, so check it out. Look at how beautiful this Pompano looks. Just... The texture, if you're a fisherman and you've eaten a lot of fish in your lifetime, when you look at a certain fish, you can just tell certain fish just shine much more than others. And pompano really just is, is super, super unique in texture and flavor, in the color of the filet, and uh, there really is nothing like it. So since this fish has so much flavor, I'm gonna really let it shine and I'm gonna season it really lightly. We're gonna grill it outside and I'm gonna do um, some oil, some avocado oil on both sides of our pompano, just to prevent it from sticking from or to the grill grates, and especially with the skin. And this skin has so much flavor. If you've ever eaten pompano and you haven't had it with the skin on, the next time you have pompano, I highly suggest you try it with the skin on because there's so much flavor in there. Salt. garlic and pepper and that's it 
SPG is pretty much what I do as a base for almost any fish recipe. But I'm going pretty light with all three of these on this fish. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side and we're gonna throw it on the grill. And just to be safe, I'm gonna score the pompano skin a little bit because scoring the skin is gonna help it to prevent from curling. If it wanted to curl up on you on the grill and not lay flat. So just real superficially into the skin. Okay, we're gonna do a medium high heat on the Camp Chef Apex grill out here. So I'm gonna start with the flesh side down because I wanna give our fish some color. So we're gonna cook it about halfway flesh side down, the other half skin side down. I really like to get that color on the flesh side. Um, and yeah, we'll see it in about five minutes. Now, we've been fishing all day. It's almost eight o'clock at night, so I wanted to do a real simple recipe. I love bread. I think bread is the best carb ever created on earth. And uh, so we got some rosemary sourdough bread, which is picked up at Whole Foods, Dennis and I. We're gonna go onto our sourdough bread with some olive oil. And we're gonna toast this on the grill, just like we're gonna do with our pompano. And then we're gonna just season it with a little garlic salt. And now let's work on our salad. So I'm gonna do a little tomato arugula salad. Already started with some minced garlic right here. Got some baby arugula we're gonna go in with. So we're just gonna slice this relatively thin. Shallots are, I would describe them as a sweeter mini red onion. I don't think they got as much of a bite as a regular onion. They are, whoa, they did cook fast, huh? They're still juicy, look at this. Man, those fish cooked fast. Don't mind those pieces. Our fish cooked way faster than I thought it was gonna cook. All right, we got the bread going on now. To go along with our salad, I'm just gonna cut some grape tomatoes in half. Brookie's gonna zest lemon into our arugula salad. One of the final things in the salad, we're gonna do capers with all that good juice. We'll go check on our bread, make sure it's not burning. Okay, little sous chef Brooke. This is for limes, so it doesn't really fit lemons. It's <laughs> all right. We're gonna salt to some olive oil. Look at that beautiful salad. Oh yeah, baby. So this is rosemary sourdough. This smells so incredibly good. Look at that. You hear that? Oh yeah, that's what you want to hear. Good toasty bread with some olive oil on it, some salt. And just wait till you see what we're about to do next. I don't know if your family does this, but I grew up doing this. You take raw garlic on some uh, toasty bread. And if you take that raw garlic and you rub it on your bread, it is like the best garlic bread you've ever had. And you don't need a lot, because raw garlic is much stronger than uh, you know cooked garlic. But I'm basically just seasoning our bread with that raw garlic. But you need your bread to be nice and toasty. Otherwise, you can imagine if it's really doughy, it's just not gonna work the same. It is just Brookie, Dennis and I it's late at night and I didn't know when we were going to be home so we didn't invite the rest of the fam. It's a very simple homey meal. I know you can hear that crunch. That crunch is coming from the skin. I am someone who really enjoys a full fish flavor and good crispy skin. So for me, I really enjoy it. But if you don't like it, or let's say you wanna try it and you're afraid, look at how easy the skin peels off. If you don't wanna eat the skin with your fish, it comes off easily. 
But go ahead and give it a try. Um, it's also a nice way to cook it because it kind of shields your meat from getting burnt. We don't eat pompano very often. It's usually like a wintertime thing for us. We don't chase them a lot, but I really enjoy when we do because it's a just, it's like the meaty fish. It's like the meaty inshore fish. You feel like you're getting your, your good omega-3s and your fat for the winter. You know what I mean? Like they're a real rich fish. That skin is definitely the part that has that fishy flavor to it. Where some fish don't taste as fishy when you eat their skin, like a snapper when you take the scales off and eat the skin, it's not very fishy. But this one, you're not taking any scales off of it, and it is more fishy than a typical fish. So if you don't like the fishy taste, just eat the fish off of the skin, or you can just eat a little bit of both. But yeah, pompano is definitely a treat. We don't get to have it very often. I'm not exactly sure when this video is going up, but um, in, I guess now, two days, it's gonna be Victor's birthday. So make sure you guys all comment down below and wish Victor a happy 32nd birthday. No, I'm an old man now. Yeah, so make sure you guys tell him how much you love him. Give him some love in the comments. Thank you, babe. But I wanna see what Dennis thinks. This is, this is only gonna be Dennis's second time ever trying Pompano, and the first time was last year when we filmed last year's video with him as well. You liked it last year. Oh, I did. One year together as a family. It's me, <laughs> Brookie, and Dennis. All right, here we go. Right here on the outside of the, the fish, mm -hmm. that's where that crunch is. Cooked it good, quick and easy, long down the water. Very long. And um, yeah, oops, here to see you guys. If you guys noticed, half the pompano looked like they were cooked to perfection, like this one. The other half, I don't know what happened, but it got, one of the sides got really burnt, but it's really strange because the fish that doesn't look burnt was drier than the fish that was really burnt. Like this fish right here, was so incredibly juicy. But if you guys see that the underside was a little burnt. Brick made duck poppers on the grill the other day. I wonder if there was just like an accumulation of bacon grease that just flared up on that side of the fish. But I'm Maybe human. Maybe that's why it's juicier because it was flavored with bacon uh, grease. <laughs> but I'm human. I make mistakes. Sometimes I burn things. It's not the end of the world. We still had a great meal. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. It was a slow day for us, but by no means are we not appreciative of the day. Eight pompano in one day is a killer day for most people, but you gotta remember, when Adam's going out there, he's out there to make money. So for him, anything less than 30, 40 pompano a day is just not a profitable day for him. But like I said, if you guys wanna book a charter, he does inshore stuff, offshore stuff, He's local to Jupiter. You're gonna have an amazing time. He's an extremely talented young man and I highly recommend him. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. This is gonna be the first video you guys see of 2024. Looking forward to a lot of videos and showcasing our adventures and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.